The following podcast contains strong language, like what the actual fuck. Scarecrow Festival is like the most important day of the year. Daft cow. This is just ridiculous. What the actual fuck. Hey, what the actual fuckers, and welcome to WTAF of This Country podcast. Now, first, he's the man that was just sat on a train when he heard Paul Merton say to his agent, the old milky bar kid keeps staring at me. This is why we should go first class, Derek. It's Neil. <laughs> it's not the f- Hello, everybody. It's not the first time I've been called a milky bar kid, either. I bet it isn't. I'm surprised we haven't jumped on that years ago. Yeah, I would rock a white cowboy hat. (laughs) (laughs) Every Friday night. Yeah. Okay, now I guess this episode needs no introduction, whether it's from his songwriting skills, he did write Wonderwall after all, his shagging skills, all the gear, no idea, or just playing a shithouse. He's now also famous for goggling at the box with Daisy. We are proud to announce the return of the dirty peeper, Big Dipper himself, Martin Mucklow, the one and only Paul Cooper. All right there, guys. <laughs> now, I was listening to the first time you joined us, which was way back in episode three, um, which was the first okay. time you chatted. And that was just after you finished filming series two. Right. So we've got a lot to talk about. <laughs> because obviously when we spoke to yeah. you then, we had no idea what was uh, in store for Martin Mucklow. We had no idea just what kind of a shit house he was going to be and what he was going to become. And also how much he was going to become this anti-hero that a lot of people loved. Did you have any inkling at the time that that was what was going to happen? No, not really. Um, I think it's really kind of hit home third series, really. You know, that, you know, suddenly there's been a huge wave of, um, you know, kind of interest. And, and I guess just on social media, it takes time to, to build a following. And then you get, you know, comments like you, you know, you dirty peeping git or whatever. <laughs> and uh, during COVID, I, you know, suddenly it kind of ro- Instagram or whatever, which is where I've got most followers, you know, it, it just kind of rocketed really. So then you get the feedback, you know, about the show and about your own, you know, your own performance in it. And it's been, you know, been superb. And I think going through lockdown that, you know, that um, the early stages of lockdown seems ages ago, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. You know, the, 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 the some of the third series i think that that so many people have said it it's kind of helped them through lockdown and and beyond you know mm. uh, and that they continually go back to for their kind of mental health you know it's extraordinary so on the third series i find the, the episode that you mainly feature in episode three is a lot darker you're a lot darker in it than you have been before when you move back in some of the things was that all scripted uh yes pre- pretty much so um except the uh a, 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 the ad lib the tv bit although they only used a little bit about that and i kind of went off piste and went absolutely mad on that um uh, most of that was well virtually all of that was cut out but it's it's been in some of the the uh, outtake reels you know what i'm going on about throwing kids on chip pan fires and stuff. <laughs> um, and unfortunately, we had a massive party with uh, Dan Greaves, Jimmy Walker. Um, and, and I should think if we had a whole night, you know, just one big, huge piss up, which was the kind of drinks before um, going on to a party, my uh, release party. But uh, unfortunately, about two seconds through the window was filmed of that because that was some of that stuff. You could have made a whole series just on that. Um, <laughs> And that's the problem, you know, so much gets cut because they film so much and there's mm. so good stuff. You can make a whole month series easy. So you, I was going to say with the dark stuff though, when you read it on the script, did you think, whoa, that's even gone a bit darker than I usually am as Martin? Kind of, but it was kind of heading that way, wasn't it? You know, how can we make him dark? And, you know, he was such a, a bastard after the second series, how the second series ended. 
Um, you know, he's been in prison for a couple of years, so he's he's kind of come out a bit of a bitter man and a you know nasty nasty piece of work. It's that but, bit. Um, it's yeah. that bit when you're talking about hovering a pillow over like baby Kerry's face, um, and uh, you've got this knack of it doesn't look like you're acting and it's very natural, but you have these little moments, that bit when you go, well, you, you, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know, I could have done it. You know what I mean? I think it's just fantastic. And it's one of those things I don't think you could go to acting school for years and not have that natural little moment. That's one of my most, that's one of my favorite moments in the series is that bit when you go, you, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? That sort of thing isn't, is that scripted or is that something that you just add? into it into your performance it's it's scripted but but uh, i have to give credit to you know tom uh, uh, simon and um daisy and charlie for the notes they gave me i don't actually charlie wasn't there i don't think so i'm not going to give him any credit <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the notes they gave me and you know, just about underplaying it you know to make to, to make it that much more powerful so you know um you know the direction and stuff is is absolutely superb, you know, um, uh, and they talk you know, talk you through each bit, but they let you run with it, you know. We always have a num quite a number of takes, and there's a bit of ab lib, and they'll they'll take bits from everything. But uh, that was really the way, you know, that um, they told me how to play it was to kind of underplay it, you know, so mm. that much more dark and powerful. Did you find it easier to film though this time being the third time in? Sorry. Did you find it an easy, a more of an easier experience to film third time in? Um, yes. Yeah, I didn't, I had very little nerves. But in retrospect, actually, I think um, my better acting was probably in the, the, when I was completely naive in maybe the first series with um, Peeping Tom. Oh, really? I just thought some of the stuff there was kind of, I don't know, um, and and maybe uh, threatening letters, but uh, yeah, I, I kind of thought I was better then. <laughs> the thing is, I think you set such a high, but that first scene or the scene of you telling Kerry about when you first peeped, mm. and and that, again, I, I'm not blowing smoke up your ass. I just think you're very very good at doing that kind of thing, and it's totally believable. If someone, I think we even said sure. it when we first watched it, Neil, that. If someone had said that that's the first time you'd ever acted and you're not a proper actor, no one would believe you because it was just, you were so natural at it and so great at doing that sort of thing. And that voice, I know it's, I think I was listening to, again to the episode that we did before you said it's based on Fred West. Mm. I mean, yeah. what do you do based with on, a character like that? <laughs> Yeah, I, well, I mean, it's 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 such a brilliant character to play, you know. Um, being a nice guy or whatever is difficult. I think villains, it's the it's the best parts to play, without a doubt, you know. And you can get away with absolutely bloody murder. Mm. You know? Yeah, especially when you're talking to people later and you're doing celeb videos. <laughs> <laughs> you can say what you want, you know, and, and no one takes offence. You know, oh yeah, I'll give you a missus a good stuffing, you know, I'll <laughs> beat on her and you know. Sort of, well, I shag in her in every position. <laughs> <laughs> Take that, that's fine. You might, you might, might, might. You can do what he wants. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. So how has the cameos been coming on then? How how is that taken has it taken off well for you? Well, it's got me off universal credit, put it that way. <laughs> yeah. It's literally the only thing that's keeping me alive at present. Right. Well that's good. You know, well, you know, I mean, it's it's funny, you know, it, it's um because my job just stopped the you know first day of lockdown and um I was self employed so yeah it's been it's been great really i mean it's it's uh, um full credit to um to uh, clinton baptiste so he uh, very kindly said you know i did a bit of work for him and um uh he said uh, you know get on this thing he said it saved me you know I'm, he he was you know in the middle of a tour and that was all cancelled. So mm -hmm. you know, people in the industry have been really really hard hit. So um, you know you, you just kind of do. It's not something I probably would have done before, but uh, you do what you can to survive. You know, mm -hmm. absolutely. 
Mm. So how has, um, obviously, financial side of it has been hard. How has lockdown been for you, sort of personally and mentally? Have you been able to cope okay? Because I know you've been doing a lot of stuff on Instagram and um, and that as Martin Mucklow and sort of as yourself with Little Pip going out every so often. Has it been sort of, it's been hard for everybody, hasn't it? But how have you dealt with it? Yeah. Um, yes, it's, it's kind of... Uh, um, just kind of did things like, I mean, I got the guitar out of the garage, you know, much to the annoyance of Jill. Um, and, uh, you know, I hadn't played it for about, you know, 30 odd years. So just, you know, I started writing songs again. I haven't written a song since 1982, you know. So just those kind of things, weird things. So people, I think people have, you know, it's been tough, but also people have discovered things maybe that they've, Put back or haven't had time to do so i think it's been a i think it's been a very creative time and for a lot of people you know mm. is this something you would do is right as well like charlie and daisy would you ever ever go write in a sitcom yourself or anything or... um well I've, I've written a short film or, or or helped write a short film that um hopefully will, will come out one day uh, so I've kind of done that. So we're looking kind of for funding and stuff um, on a totally different subject. The kids aren't involved in that one. Um, but so so that was my first kind of. I've written a couple of books in the past, um, but uh, that was my first kind of stab at it. So quite enjoyed it. But I think short films, ten minutes long, are my kind of. I just get bored after a while. I don't. I, you know what I mean? It just kind of loses interest. So. <laughs> Short films is the new the new thing. Yeah, shorts. Yeah. I just want to go back to what you said about the um the party scene um with mm. with Dan. Yeah. What in regards to like you said it could have been a whole show by itself. So what did that scene actually entail then? Can you tell us or um yeah, yeah, we were doing all sorts, uh kind of arm wrestling, drinking competitions, uh rolling around dancing uh chanting um and it's quite interesting because they said oh to make it more realistic do you want a mate there so my best mate rodders he looks like rodney trotter you see him for about one second so he came down and joined in so that was quite a laugh um and i know <laughs> poor jimmy was really bigging it up oh yeah i'm in this episode <laughs> and I his shadow for about two seconds through the window but that's the way it is you know that's, yeah. that's the way it is but it was a kind of a lot of filming you know it's a couple of hours filming <laughs> mm. messing then, around on that lib and you know it was and also fun. there's sandra at the end of the episode which we only sort of really get a far away glimpse of um with holly atkins that's so right. yeah, yeah was there was, yeah. was there more of that scene or was that basically it with that that was kind of it, yeah. It was so. It was, um, yeah. My my first um, my first on screen kiss. <laughs> yeah. How many takes? So was that? I'm your... <laughs> what you do, and you just you obviously no tongues. Just... <laughs> yeah, the bizarre, absolutely kind of bizarre, bizarre thing. But um, you know, the actress was was superb, and and kind of she'd done it before, so you know. Mm. So we're not going to see you in the remake of Nine and a Half Weeks then, Paul? Well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Nine and a Half Seconds is more <laughs> my... <laughs> track uh, record. <laughs> you, you need to keep up the Martin Mucklow mystique, though, mate. You can't go saying that. That's you know. right. Yeah, oh, nine t yeah, ten times a night, me. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Banging on all the time. Um, yeah, so... Because I'm never going to be going backwards and forwards, but I need because because we, we only spoke to you while you've just finished filming series two. The whole thing when series two came out, and then we had the cliffhanger at the end, what Kerry was going to do, and then the aftermath. Were you a little bit disappointed that you didn't have more to do in the aftermath episode? Yes, shattered. Uh, were you? <laughs> no, because I, um, because Daisy said, "Oh, Dad." <laughs> You're in loads. It's all about you in prison. And, <laughs> and this is how things change. You know, you're in prison and, you know, you're in there and, uh, and um, 
you're desperate to try and get some fags and you're you're kind of writing to Kerry. So of course so I thought, oh brilliant, this is this is gonna be this is gonna be good. And then it goes very quiet and you think, oh, just wonder if I am. But that's the nature of it. Suddenly they, they totally change, you know. And very often with the kids, they're halfway through writing an episode and then they said say this ain't working and they go back and they completely completely rewrite it completely differently so that's that's what it's about it just you know it sounds like a great idea and then halfway through it's not really going anywhere mm. making them laugh so they completely change it mm. and they have their favorites you know the series three they're not happy with you know and uh, they don't want to watch you know so it's, it's series three was you know, Charlie said it was a million times tougher than the other two to, to write. And it was a diff very difficult for both of them. They 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 really, you know, it, it was a it was a it was tough. Yeah. What well, well, difficult as in to get the story right, or difficult in the fact of the constraints, because I know they were up against it time wise, weren't they? Is or difficult obviously because of time wise sl sl uh, Michael as well, the person of Michael. And Michael, yeah, and Michael. And just, uh, you know, uh, Daisy had come back from filming um, David Copperfield. And, of course, with David Copperfield, you know, there was a bit of ad lib and there's all these, you know, great people around and you're picked up in the morning and you, you get weighted hand and foot. And, and you've got no responsibilities at all. You just come up and you rock up and do your lines and it's fun, you know, and meet up in the evening and stuff. And then suddenly you're it's all it's all hangs on you the responsibility of all those actors all the crew um you know by coming up with a decent script so so much hangs on it and i think they just i think they were quite amazed actually how good some of those episodes were some of them they weren't they weren't so happy with mm. but um i think they were amazed actually how it turned out they they kind of hadn't got a clue because they don't get involved really in the, um, uh, you know, the, the mixing and stuff of it, the editing. Um, it's just too much, you know, it's, yeah. it's just too much. So I thought that, so they were very pleasantly surprised, you know, at the outcome. And I think, you know, I, the, I think the, the driving lesson one for me is, was my favorite. I, uh, my favorite episode of all three series. I thought, I thought that mm. was yeah that's the episode that won our poll we did a poll for the best episode right, okay. ever, and that was the one that won sort of quite overwhelmingly mm. yeah it's just one of those ones i just laughed all the way through you know it's proper slapstick isn't it in places yeah <laughs> do they yeah. come to you then and ever ask you about like if they're writing let's say for martin do they ever come to you for ideas or maybe say to you what would you think martin would do in a situation like this no, <laughs> it's very much their thing with input mm. from Tom and Simon, who you know, who were who were great. So you know, they would do a couple of things, and then they, you know, Tom and Simon say, "Oh, well, hang on, you can't say that because that happened in episode." You know, it's all that continuity, and um, uh, you know, they're a good team. You have to have a really good kind of team, you know. Mm. Um. But, uh, oh, sorry, Paul. I, I keep out of it. You know, I, I completely keep out of. Yeah. Uh, kind of series one, I was all kind of what you know, what lines have I got, and what you know, what about I change this and what? But I, you know, they're they're the experts, and I I, yeah. I I try not to talk about it. It was a struggle. All I know is that you kind of you know they'd ring after kind of a day's writing and every day was, Oh, it was awful. Oh, it was awful. And you think, Jesus, what's this third series going to be like? So, um, mm. and I think yeah, that's one of the reasons why they've moved on. Absolutely. So where, where would you have liked to have seen Martin if you've had a chance of writing an episode yourself? Oh, shagging as many women as possible. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, really. I kind of, it, it, I, I don't really have any specific feelings, really. It's just great to have something written for you, and it's a surprise. You know, I've kind of divorced myself from that, really, and, and, you know, always relish when I see the, see the you know, the 
what what's been written and um you always kind of think oh a lot of this will get cut because you know they just film you know tom just films so much you know, he films loads you know mm. um and so, some of the good gags are out there but you there, there are some someday it'll all come out there is just so many good scenes that you know are still haven't been shown mm. <laughs> I mean, with one of the things that you've got, I think, coming up as we're recording this, we could have Martin Mucklow, Ghost Hunter. I think would be a good one. Well, that's right. And I'm doing a, yeah, charity ghost hunt on the 5th of September. So, um, um, so yeah, I mean, um, I'm not sure what it's about. I'm just turning up. And... <laughs> Can you believe? I get frightened as hell. I can't watch. I don't watch any horror movies. I get re I'm really I'm a real scaredy cat and hear that stuff. Do you believe in ghosts? So, shitting my pants. <laughs> <laughs> do, you believe, uh, do you believe in ghosts so Paul? Uh yes, I do. Uh we lived in my parents' house years ago, which was an incredibly old house, and one of the rooms was the spare the guest room was, was haunted. So several people that stayed there saw a vision, uh, an old man so um you know a number of occasions that and you went in that room and it was just christ there was this, such an atmosphere and it was unbelievable mm. it just made me it made me laugh then because you said old man the way you say young man when you're doing your brian clef impersonation <laughs> <laughs> well and but the thing is it, this kind of some of it me is skeptical because why don't you see so many animals. In fact, Daisy and I, at one stage, long before this country, we were. She had an idea of writing um, uh, a TV comedy um, called Dinosaur Ghost about a guy that sees. And there, there was an actually found an article about a guy in Devon who saw a ghost of a dinosaur. <laughs> It, it that does, would make it, a brilliant it, thing, you know. It's a good question, guy, though. And no one believes him. His wife leaves him and he loses his job because they think he's gone, you know, barking mad. And, uh, you know, in the end, everyone sees this. A bit like Harvey, the rabbit, you know. Mm. Everyone sees this um, dinosaur ghosts. Uh, yeah. Why are there no caveman ghosts and uh, anything like that? Why, exactly. Why, why yeah, is that? Except on um, Matthew Bain's thing. Yeah, yes. But, yeah, exactly. It's always old Victorian men, isn't it? With That's right. Them. Or men it, with rough, women with ruffs. You know. I remember when Daisy and Charlie were here, and Daisy played us that audio uh, when she was in Swindon Hospital of the the ghost. You actually hear a ghost. That's the first time right. I've ever actually hear, heard a ghost. And I don't know. I'm yeah. very skeptical about it. And I think unless I saw a ghost in front of me, I've never seen a ghost. Then I don't really believe it until. I see something, but maybe you can tell us about it when you yeah. see all the ghosts on September the fifth. Well, there we go. Absolutely, yeah. I've never, I've never actually seen, but but people came out of that. But there's very odd kind of knocks on doors, you know, your bedroom doors at night. And there's weird stuff going on in that house. Yeah, certainly. Happens, yeah. yeah. One of the other things I wanted to say, and and that I, I have very rarely ever criticized this country as as a show but the one thing that i really wanted to see in series three was kerry telling martin to fuck off to have that moment where she he's treated her like shit so many times that she actually breaks and and i really thought that was good when, when she when she saw Martin and Sandra having the kiss. I really thought that was going to be the moment. And I was really disappointed that that moment wasn't there. Was there ever any plans for there to be a confrontation where Kerry face-to-face -face told her how she felt? Uh, not, not, that I, not that I know of. I mean, it may well have been written because there's so many rewrites and stuff. Um, but I don't know. I, I think potentially it might have been a bit I, I know it said what everyone wanted, but it's kind of possibly unrealistic. I don't, can, you know, can, when, when you see the rest of what that's gone on, mm. uh, has that kind of control over, and she still looks up to him, you know, right? Yeah, there. yeah. So she's always hoping, she's always waiting for that for that moment. So it's probably 
probably more more akin to real life, I would guess. And do you think it would have closed that door? So then if there are more, or if there is a Christmas special or something later on in the future, that door's still open now, isn't it? That obviously, if the, the, he, she doesn't tell him to fuck off, he's still always going to be around. Well, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think he's, you know, he's 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 good for an episode, isn't he? You know, he comes in and causes a bit of havoc and mayhem and then kind of leaves. So, yeah, yeah, keep, keep it as it is, I think. Yeah, and it's also, it's one of the greatest entrances into an episode, the episode that you're in, that, that main one in Series 3, where she's chatting about something, you just come walking in in your dressing gown, get some out of the fridge, walk back out, and then, like, there's there's no fanfare, and I can remember watching that the first time, thinking, Fuck, "Was that fucking Martin that just what? What the hell's he doing there?" There's, you know, there's there's no sort of big fanfare. Yeah. Today. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Martin Mucklow, and you you walk yeah, back, knock in. on the door, I'm back. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know you stand this, uh, it was just yeah, uh, brilliantly great done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be- beautifully done. And I think that's why it's a bit like the, you know, not, you know, she her calling out Martin. It's that. It's it's they kind of almost think beyond that if you know what I mean. Yeah, they, you know that's they try not to be too obvious, you know, mm. and, and lead you too too much, you know. I think that makes a lot of sense. The amount of times we predicted what we think is going to happen, like in the next series, and none of that happens because again we're, we're thinking i think of what the obvious thing is going to be that so and so is going to do that yeah. so and so is going to be there this is gonna, and i think that's where their writing is so clever is that they mm-hmm. are in between the lines you know they're, they're doing some stuff that people don't even yeah. think about or it's just real life it's what would happen in real life as opposed to what would happen on a tv show yeah i think a lot of shows you you can kind of predict what's going to happen uh, but certainly in that one, you you, you can you can never predict. Yeah, you no, can never no. Predict. Right, Just we need to ask... asshole, that's all. Yeah, Paul, we need to ask you about Gogglebox. How did that come about? Uh, well, Daisy was asked, and um, and then they asked me, and I don't know the producer likes Martin apparently. Uh, so it just kind of came out of the blue, you know. Again, when when things were really tough, so. You know, I got the kind of the, the videos and the goggle box nearly at the same time. So it was just bizarre, you know, how things just change in a moment, you know. And, um, yeah, it was great to, you know, it was a real honour to be kind of part of something like that, you know. No, most, most of the viewers didn't know who the hell I was, but, uh, uh, and that was a quite difficult one, you know, to do. Uh, because you're kind of, you're there for three hours commenting and then they kind of use one thing or two things so it's and especially that last one i thought oh god we're in the last quarter and i haven't said a word yet and then <laughs> there was the slush puppy moment so and i forgot even i said that and then it was kind of you know i heard nothing else for the next week so so how does that actually work that are you watching it at the time that it's on the tv or do they give you a, a like a no. dvd of the programs that you just then watch? Do you watch the whole program? Like Greece, did you watch the whole film? Were you watching bits of it or? No, you, ju- you just watch 10, 15 minutes. Oh, right. Yeah, and yeah, so you comment on that. So, I mean, you know, if, if there's going to be news. All right, sorry, <laughs> Jill's walked in. <laughs> Hi, oh, Jill. <laughs> Hello, darling, I've got your picture. I'm so sorry. Oh, That's right. okay. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, you're, li- you're live on the podcast now, Jill. So you've got your face in there. Oh, well, you're, sorry. Your... No, that's <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> oh my god, sorry. Uh, oh, oh, bless dear. your heart. <laughs> um, um, oh yes, yeah, so, yeah. You 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 kind of see you you see extracts um, uh, of it. You don't see the whole thing, but they kind of you know you kind of have a look out at the newses and things like that that week. You know you know probably there's going to be a news item but um yeah it was great fun to do um so you're there for three hours because of covid regulations um because daisy and i live in different houses it was done in a neutral house in stroud uh so i don't know whose house it was it was much better than daisy in our house. <laughs> and uh, there's lots of snacks there and 
you know, drink, and they keep asking you to top up the snacks, and you have a takeaway of your choice. So we, we had Chinese both times. We filmed and uh, took it home with us. So Nice. I mean, that's that's goggle box for you, isn't it? I mean, the thing is, it's quite a, like you said, it must have been quite an honour to do something like that. But were you surprised with how it's made? Or did you go in there thinking, my God, we've got to watch all these programmes. We're going to be here for hours. Yeah, I, I hadn't really much idea. Yeah, but um, it, it, um, but it kind of made sense because you, you just comment, comment, you know, comment on the bits you see. And they pick good good extracts so it's you know mm. you know like the basic instincts and stuff like that you know the classic things the only mm. trouble is when you watch it back and and then they someone else they they have someone else do a particular line you think oh no i had a great line yeah. I, my line was much better than that you know that that kind of stuff so it's really kind of stressful watching it because you you kind of think well that was my best line and, and they haven't used that one they've used you know, so and so, so so it's quite difficult. Mm. Are you quite critical when you watch yourself back on the, this country? Um, a little bit, yeah. I kind of actually the th the, the stuff in the third series. I kind of thought, uh, you know, I thought I did better than a, than when I watched it. But you know, you, I think you're always critical. I think when you're starting to be really happy with your performance you know you know then, then i think maybe you need time to worry i think you always think oh wish i'd done that or you know a bit of that you're always actually just looking at the thinking about the lines they've they've cut the bits they've cut which mm -hmm. is inevitable and you think oh i wish i hadn't cut that line or that bit you know the, the classic being that pub scene in uh, series two you know but um something had to go and it was you know, something that um, it didn't actually, it was nothing to do with the plot, you know, so so it went, you know, yeah. because there were other scenes that were, and that was a great, I mean, we filmed all night, there's some brilliant stuff after we left to go to the, um, me and Jimmy, um, Dan Greaves leave to go to the social club, there's a whole lot of stuff with, with Charlie and uh, getting chucked out and being drunk and singing through a, um, you know, a traffic cone and you know, there's a whole load of other stuff going on outside, you know. So, mm. but stuff has to be cut. You know. And that then you had, you you had to uh, wear a wig for the uh, for the video scene as well from the year two thousand. Yeah, I look like a kind of Dutch. Um, Kind of porn star, really. <laughs> <laughs> Some kind of guys. Uh, yeah, and, and all that, go, you know, you have to go out to London and to Tottenham and go and have, be fitted for a week. There's, there's so much kind of all that that goes into it. The detail from, you know, the, the, the props department and the makeup uh, department are just uh, extraordinary. So uh, yeah, the 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 lady who does who's fantastic, um, and yeah, kind of go up and that's the kind of day you know doing doing wigs and going round different places in London you know, mm. driving in the car you know trying to park and you know <laughs> central London try and get wigs kind of fitted. So. Yeah, so it's it, there's an awful lot goes into Emily bless her you know she kind of went with me she's a diamond she's superb you know all the cast all the crew and cast are fantastic on that show you know big disappointment you know when when it when it's it all finishes really you know, you know they all go their separate ways very odd very odd feeling so now you've got this acting bug pool is there a role that you would like to have a go at i'd like to do a serious role mm. and, you know kind of drama I'd, I'd love to do something in you know something like that so there's a little couple of little irons in you know irons in fires and and stuff and I've you know so we'll we'll see you know if anything kind of comes. Mm. Talk. Uh, well, I mean, yeah. talk. Talking of your acting, there's the video of uh, you doing a um, like an audition with Daisy that found its way online, didn't it? Oh, so, yeah. so, so what was all that? Because it it looked like you were having fun, 
but it looked like Daisy was having a little bit more fun uh, trying to guide you through this audition. Yeah, I, I think the people I was doing the audition with saw it and I never got the job. <laughs> Before we were taking the piss, which we weren't. It was just, Daisy just thought I was so bad at it, you know. Um, so, <laughs> so, yeah. It's the trouble you've got to have someone reading reading the lines for you you know mm. and uh, um who do I, who do i go to daisy just laughed at my face. well all the family just kind of laugh just they can't take me seriously to be perfectly honest so what, even your brother well he lives in london so you know oh, yeah that's true they won't be laughing when you pick, pick up the BAFTA for best actor, will they? That'd be right. They yeah. won't be laughing yeah. then. Um, now, no, I noticed on uh, enemy.com today that they are calling for Daisy to get a knighthood because of all of her mm. Instagram stuff that has like helped the country through all of the stuff that's happened over the last few months. As her dad, are you sort of proud when you see her dancing away? swinging everything around to whatever kind of EastEnders or I'm a celebrity get me out of here or do you just sort of shake your head and think well that's just Daisy yeah we see it every day (laughs) (laughs) with us so um but I think I think people are really um you know people have kind of said it's helped them and give give them a bit of Bit of, bit of a laugh each day and that's what it's about you know yeah. the whole sea captain thing was like the story oh. of lockdown it was like it was like a, a soap opera every day you would jump on instagram to find out what was going on with this sea captain and who he was two-timing daisy with today it was it, i mean i'm not a yeah. fan. I, know I don't normally troll things like instagram but i was transfixed i couldn't stop looking to see what was going on yeah, and I mean, virtually now, every kind of post she puts up now is kind of in the papers the next day. You know, yeah. it's extraordinary. It is absolutely crazy. So, uh, yeah. And she came late to, to social media. She wasn't on, you know, it was Charlie that was one on Instagram and, and, and she wasn't, it wasn't really her cup of tea. And now it's, uh, can't keep her off. You know? <laughs> but she seems to have embraced it a lot more, hasn't she? Because I think she went on it I don't know when it was, maybe last year or the year before, and then she came off it quite quickly, didn't she? Because she, she didn't seem to sort of be able to, mm. to grasp it, but she's, she's definitely grasped it with both hands now, and it's um, like a must-see for almost every celebrity that's out there as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, she's so kind of spontaneous and, and, and you know, uh, it makes stuff up at the, you know, drop of a hat. So, yeah. you know, and, and I think, with lockdown and stuff it was just just trying to make well her laugh herself and other people laugh and uh, just, just keep it going and then and then you get get you know people kind of uh, supporting it and and you you want to keep them happy and, and keep it going even starting hashtags as well it was like, what can you fit under your tits and stuff i mean you know she's a trailblazer yeah, I mean, she's a tra- yeah i was i was i was Straight onto that, I must have been having a little look at that. But yeah, incredible. And you know, coming forward that probably would never have, have, have thought of showing their boobs on, um, you know, Instagram or sharing or whatever. I mean, it was, you know, good. You know, there's some really funny ones and the stuff they were putting under there was extraordinary. You know? <laughs> <laughs> the records must have been. <laughs> Must have been updated every day, I would have thought. I yeah. think so. Um, right, we asked uh, for a few fans to send some questions in. I think you might have seen a, a couple of these online anyway, but uh, we're going to fire through some of these. Uh, Darren Brown said, what would you like to happen to Martin in the future? So if if there is a Christmas special in 10 years or five years or whenever, what would you like to see Martin do? Or where would you like to see him situated? It sounds really naff, but as I kind of said before, I, I don't really know. I, I, I just don't think about it I, because it's just nice to be surprised and you open a script up at where he's gone next. And I, I like it. I like it to be um, in someone else's hands, to be honest. Uh, I kind of, I think I early on, I kind of thought about it, but now it's just, you just want it written for you, you know, because, because they're great at that. And, uh, um, you know, I, I I don't actually have any thoughts for that, really. 
Well, you'd want him to be the same. That's what I'd want. Otherwise, yeah, he... kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that that's what why it's you know he's endeared people to him, and, and God knows why. But you know, people love Martin. You know, he's just uh, San- Sandra's good. got Sandra's got another couple of kids. That's what it'll be when it. So you know, yeah, there we go. Yeah, you know, yeah, uh, very busy. Yeah. Yes. Harry makes a good, makes a good breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Bluz says, "Are the tattoos real?" I'm nosy now. I did. I did say. She needs to go and listen to the f- first time we chatted to you because uh, you do chat about the, the tattoos. But but anyway, the tattoos, are they real? No, no, they're not. No, I don't have a tattoo on my body. Really? Um, funny enough, someone said, yeah, they are real, aren't they? You know, and I said, no. So, well, what about the status quo one? And I said, no. And they said, but, but you like quo, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, once in 75 at the Amazon with Apollo. A bit drunk and they were all right, you know. <laughs> Not my favourite band. <laughs> it's just people just get that Mucklow character and they just think you're Mucklow, you know. I mean, yeah. it's it's and 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 that's why I think we've said before. I don't get anyone ever coming up to it. So rarely, um, uh, you know, in Gloucestershire. But I went to Nottingham for um, three days uh, last month and. Every other person I stop stopped me. It was bizarre. And I think that's because they don't expect to see you, and they're just there's not much there's not so much of a filter up, up there. Um, <laughs> like that you know they they kind of you know yay my hey mine you know so uh, it's bizarre. it's just, it's weird but I think you know, that's a bit more reserved and people just don't. They're always kind of thinking, mm, will really he be a bit shitty if I go up and ask for a selfie or whatever? But, but like, like, like you said earlier, if they come up and ask for a selfie, you could be shitty and they would love it because you're Martin Mucklow. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? If you went, fuck off, yeah, they'd go, oh, Martin Mucklow yeah. told me to fuck off. <laughs> yeah. That well, I, I tell the story again. I think I've told it on here. Charlie and I once went to Cheltenham and, and uh, we kind of went our own separate ways and then met up for coffee. And he said, oh, some guy came up to me and asked for a selfie. And he said, uh, yeah, I saw that guy who plays Martin Mucklow earlier. I wasn't going to ask that bastard for a selfie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then, then you know that they love you. That's another... Right, so Laura Bourne said, yeah. uh, were there any bits that were awkward or embarrassing to film in front of or with your kids? Um, no, not really. I think in the the first kind of woo, in the the first kind of series, you thought, "Wow, you know," but by the by the third series, you you know, no, not at all. You know, um, it's it's you know they they've got a vision of Martin, and it's I think the tag team tugging was probably, but you think, Jeez. <laughs> um, but uh, but when you're kind of rehearsing and you're reading it, and you think, "Now, nah, you know, this is this is." Fine, you know, mm. makes sense. Okay, um, at SCI Gens five six seven one one. That's a that's a good name. Uh, did he or did he not spend all that money on Babe Station? And is he attracted to the blowholes of dolphins? <laughs> well, yes, yes to both. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am mean, right, Dave. She's pulled my pants down there. <laughs> <laughs> she's, got, she's got me yeah that's me. <laughs> and i was gonna say you're not talking as martin mucklow there are you you're, you're talking as, of course not, as... <laughs> no, no, no. uh and the last one uh from amanda amanda facer uh was martin's character already decided on how much of a bastard he was going to be or were you allowed to have the freedom to mold him into what you interpreted him to be does he have no feelings for kerry whatsoever No, well, I mean, the writing and the directing, you know, formatted it really. I, I, you know, and, and the kind of the way the script was. So, yeah, I mean, the writing dictated it. And, um, you know, the, the notes from uh, kids and uh, the director and the producer, you know, Tom and Simon, um, kept me on track, really. It's, it's you know, it's, it's, it's the writing, the, the great writing and the great direction that made it what it was. It was, it, you know. So it's, I didn't particularly, particularly mould it, you know, 
they asked me about the voice so i got the voice right and then it just follows on from there really you know just the kind of once you get the voice then you kind of just get inside the person and then you just you know you you know because i haven't done that before obviously and then you just start getting the body movements and the way they walk it just kind of comes almost naturally really mm. you you just feel who you know who you are um so there's no i don't i don't kind of go around walking like, like you know trying to figure out and the kids are very much they you know there's there's a lot of this stuff where who was the actor used to kind of go into when he did you know um last the mohicans kind of lived in the woods for a oh, year. daniel <laughs> daniel day lewis yeah that kind famous. of stuff yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah but but the kids are very much they just click on and off you know um you know they they don't kind of they're not living the role to getting in the, the zone as it were you know so, i'd be um, i'd be i'd be worried if you took that um if took that uh, direction if you were going to do that for Martin Mucklow I'd be very worried for Jill yeah, and, and everybody around in prison <laughs> anyhow <so. laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I'm just I'm just in being in character <laughs> yeah. officer is he's it's a lot of cold hearted stuff in with 6,000 Dysons in the back of a transit yeah. Yeah. Uh, the other thing we want to congratulate you for is uh, your team's now in the Premier League yes yeah. How, was... how, now, how much of a surprise was that? I mean, before lockdown, I'm sure that was something that you didn't even think uh, was going to be on the radar, did you? Or, or as a fan, did you think you, you had a chance? It's Fulham, by the way. No, no. Ma massive surprise. And then we lost the first two games uh, against Brentford, who are our rivals. And of course, we played in the final. And then against Leeds, who were kind of, you know, we, they tonked us 3 0 or something. Uh, and so we just thought, oh, this is really bad. But they just, they just seem to kind of build and build. Dogs have been mentally. They just seem to kind of build and build from there. And uh, by the final, we always, always lose to Brentford. And I just thought, oh, God, you know, anyone but Brentford in the final, we lose. But they, they've done their homework. They, they, were, they were great in that final. Trouble is, no one liked the Premiership. So everyone's going, yeah, brilliant. They think, oh, now we're in the Premiership. The Championship is the best league in the world, second to none, because everyone beats everyone and there's always a chance, yeah. whereas the premise is boring. So do you think that, the... yeah, do you think that Fulham are going to have the same approach as they did when they were there two years ago, or do you think they're going to maybe be a bit more cautious? Is it welcome to the football podcast? Well, that, that's, everybody. that's the funny thing. Um, uh, the last manager was was superb. We loved him, and the style of football was was wonderful, Slavisa. But um, you know, when we went up, we were so open, and we bought too many players, and we were so open. You know, people just carved us up. Uh, but uh, Scott Park is a lot more pragmatic, and I, I I I actually think we might stay up. But I think after a couple of seasons, we'll probably be so bored. We'll we'll be loving going back into the championship which is fun. Love it. More games, honest, no VAR, everyone beats, you know, everyone else. Um, just, it's just a great, great league, great division there. So how did you celebrate, Paul? I was watching with Charlie. He actually filmed a bit, which we can't, um, we can't show. <laughs> so I watched it with Charlie and we just went absolutely mental because we kind of went in it, dreading it really, dreading the game, thinking, oh God, you know, because you know, this the you know, this this um the second AD on, on this country is a big Brentford fan is always, you know, as soon as they beat us too nearly he's texting, you know, giving us large and uh, whatever, and it, we would have never heard the last of it. Jeez, it would have been awful. So I'm just so glad, just for that reason, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Premiership. You should have texted him straight back when he did it. Well, I didn't. He texted in first saying, um, this is Callum, by the way, if you're watching this, Callum, you bastard. Uh, so he, he kind of said, um, uh, yeah, uh, well, congratulations, but it wasn't an awful game. Well, no, it was a fucking brilliant game. We <laughs> nullified you and we got two fucking great goals. I mean, we, were, so we, we, remember, we remember Callum because we had Callum and Matt 
the first AD in the shed and Callum very kindly puked, in the, puked in the corner of my garden. Yeah. yeah. Which was, I mean, it could have been a lot worse. He could have puked, he could have puked in the Brentford studio. all over, that is. <laughs> I have to say, <laughs> I, I mean, Brentford, yeah. I think Brentford lost their chance to win promotion than anybody winning it because they, they were a game away, weren't they, from winning and they just couldn't get over the line. It was, it was incredible. They went like seven, eight games winning every game and then they just lost when they needed to win. Yeah, I mean, there's some funny teams. He Barnes, I don't know if they did they get relegated. I think they just survived. They just they survived, yeah, yeah. But um, we saw them at home just before lockdown, and they beat us three nil. Absolutely destroyed us. So I knew, you know, just just for the odd game, they're really up for it. So I, I thought they'd have troubles there. But yeah, they kind of just. I mean, they've always bottled it in the playoffs. You know, there's just something. I mean, they're they're a terrifically run club. I mean, I think. Mm they're the best run club in the country in some respects, you know, because they always get players from lower divisions and, um, you know, uh, and managers. So they always sell their managers, sell all their best players, and then they come out even better. So the system they've got there is, is superb. You know, I give them credit to that and they play some very good football, but not in, not when it mattered. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right, so would you like to tell everybody where they can get, if they wanted to get Martin Mucklow to send them a message? Um, have you got, is there a website on that? Um, <laughs> if, well, I can't. If not, I, I, do you know, I don't actually have a link. I think it's called, uh, let me have a look. Because if not, we, I mean, we will put the link in the show notes anyway, so that people are yeah, able to. Celeb VM. Right, there you go. Yeah, I can't. Connect video or something. Connect. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> They'll find it. You'll be there. <laughs> and I, I, oh, you need to get someone Connect working on your... Pro- there you go. Connect video message. There you go. Is and that, do- is that down, com? down and down and down and down and down for Martin Mucklow. There you I'm go. between... I'm between the, um, the cross-eyed bloke that... Well, the guy was... Blue Peter and uh, <laughs> someone that was on Coronation Street 15 years ago. <laughs> the cross-eyed bloke from Blue Peter. <laughs> uh, quite a good-looking cross-eyed bloke. His eyes are quite close together. Tim Vincent. Oh, okay. oh Tim Vincent. <laughs> I didn't realise his eyes were crossed. <laughs> Tim. What a really nice bloke. Oh, so he has a kind of little table and... Um, <laughs> Alex Lowe, Clinton Baptista, he got me onto it, and I, I think I'm just above him. We're kind of, you know, bottom, mid table, first division, probably. That's good. Yeah. That's a good place to be. Yeah, oh, there's that, that room for improvement to push into the European places. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the, you know, we might get promotion next season, you know, if, if, if everyone above us dies in a. In a <laughs> uh, Huge plane crash in a, the next mess, video message you put on for the top 30 or 50 people, then we might be in a chance of, of promotion, you know. So. Yeah, and or you know, if you get that BAFTA nomination, look, then you can double your price and you'll shoot at the table. Well, that's it in this, in this not, not yet written. Um, well, perhaps I'll be the new Bond, you know. Oh, yeah, I'm up for that. I tell you what. They might do a couple. No. I tell you what, I would pay money. I, w- I would go to a COVID cinema to just to watch that with my mask on. Exactly. <laughs> my yeah. name's Mucklow, Martin Mucklow. <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 I'm throwing my um, sharp and bowler hat into the ring. So uh, I think that would be what's this. I thought, well, that's, that's a winner. It writes itself. That's all I've got to say. It writes what itself. You in a tuck? With your dicky out, Paul. <laughs> Me dicky out, yeah. <laughs> what a sight. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, Paul, thank you so what? much for spending some time with us. <laughs> well, that's what we want to see now. Do Get Daisy to do a video of you just doing, like, the walk, where you walk and then you turn and you shoot. And then just a few, my name's Bond, James Bond, and let's see how it goes. That's what I think you should do. Well, no doubt, no, no doubt. When I do my self tape, she'll be doing it and, and ruin my chance and laughing. You're no Bond. You know. 
probably don't don't probably. listen to them. Go in there. I think you'd be a great Bond. I really do. So do I. I think yeah. you know, like you say, do like Bond Next Generation, where it's an older Bond yeah. passing it on to a younger yeah. guy. Yeah, you've got Absolutely. that. You've you've got that Sean Connery look about you. <laughs> <laughs> Old and bald. <laughs> oh, I know, I know that feeling, mate. But there you go. Neil just looks like the Milky Bar kid. <laughs> Well, oh, there we go. And they're yeah. on me. <laughs> <laughs> the actual fun. Indeed. Paul, thank you so much thank for you very much, Paul. Us, uh, for the second time. Um, as I've said, with all, I've said with all of the returning cast, um, we just want to thank you for everything that you've done in regards to the show and how much joy and happiness you've brought to everybody, but especially to us. You've given us a chance to do this. You've been very, very supportive to us with the live shows and all the other things that, that, that we've done. So we just want to thank you so much for your support, for what we've done, for doing what you've done, um, and just for, for making the world a happier place by being a completely big-ass shithouse. That's all I can say. Yeah, well, thank you guys for keeping the, you know, the, this country flame alive, you know, so thank you. Well, we will try and flog it as much as we can and get as many episodes out as we can. If the American, if the American show goes, I mean, we'll be going on for like 200, yeah. 300 episodes. So, I mean, I don't I suppose, yeah, is there, is there yeah. anything, have you heard anything in regards to the American show? Is it? Well, I think they've stopped because of COVID again. Uh, I think they've, they've done or done some of you know, half a pilot, I think, you know, so I, I, I'm not quite sure where they are with it. Yeah. Right. Charlie was due to fly over. Was due to fly over in in May, I think, to 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 watch it and have meetings, but um, couldn't with COVID again. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in regards, yeah. to obviously, last week, I think, as we were recording this, there were reports that Daisy and Charlie were working on something else. Do they ever mm, confide in right. you in, in regards to what they're working on, or do they keep that quiet from you? No, I, I know a bit about it, but um, yeah, it's 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 going to be good. It's going to be very different, uh, and it's going to be great. Yeah, I think. And a role for you? That's all I'm saying. Okay, okay, but that's all we want you to say. We want to be surprised like everybody else. Uh, Paul, thank it'll you. be different from this country. That's for sure. Okay, that's good then. Uh, thank you very much for joining us, Paul. Thank you, guys. Thank Take you. care and stay safe. Neil, would you like to uh, do your little bit? Yes, absolutely. You can find us on all the social media under the new tag, This Country Pod. So that's This Country Pod. We're under all Facebook, Instagram, and all the others, Twitter. You can uh, email us at wtafthiscountry at hotmail.com if you've got any questions. And likewise, you can find out everything we're up to, tickets for the live show and all the gubbins that you need to know on our website, wtafpodcast.com. That's right. And as Neil said, there are tickets still available. We've moved it to May the 28th, 2021 for the very last WTAF live. Um, so get your tickets for that. Come and join us on patreon.com forward slash WTAF if you want to support the podcast that way. Or if you want to buy us a coffee, it's ko-fi.com forward slash WTAF. Uh, and that helps support the podcast that way as well. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you very much, Paul, once again. Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much, Neil. Thank you very and much, Pav. Thank you very much, everybody else, and go and get plumbed, you fuckers. Scarecrow Festival is like the most important day of the year. <laughs> Daft cow. This is just ridiculous. What the actual fuck?